Okay. So in this lecture, what we're going to kind of set up is just the parameters of the city. So we learned all the details about where cities are, what they offer. Here we're going to start to model, okay, what does the city look like? Why do cities kind of look, why are they organized the way that are they are organized? Um, basically, we're going to focus on kind of the three big aspects of land use in a city. You have your residential areas. You have your manufacturing areas. I mean, less so now in the present, but historically there's been manufacturing done in cities and you have your office. Now, surrounding the city are the farmers, are the agricultural uh, land. The main model in urban economics, the model that's used time and time again in urban economics is called the monocentric uh, city model. And it's kind of a very, very simple basic model that kind of, best explain cities that have a downtown, that have like a real, real center to them. LA doesn't quite fit with the monocentric city model because LA kind of has lots of different centers. Um, I mean, LA is a very unique city in, 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 in many ways. Um, just, you know, historically as we've covered, it's not really a natural place for a city, um, but it also has these weird, these weird centers. It does have a downtown that has much of the activity but then it also has the beach, which is kind of a natural pole as, as well. Usually with a beach city, like a city that's on the beach um, or based around the ocean, the center is on the beach, um, you know, taking advantage of all, you know, the nice weather that comes with being on the beach and those natural amenities. LA is not like that. So it has this kind of like historic center, which is downtown, but then it also has kind of the activity that's centered around the beach. And then you have this other weird thing happening where LA its first real business was actually second because it actually was kind of, kind of an oil town before it was a movie town. But anyways, it kind of grows up as an oil and a movie town, but it's also a movie town, right? So that's where the movies are made. And the movies are historically made by these large studios. And then those studios are located throughout the city. There's some in the Valley. There's some, there's one, Sony's in Culver City. Um, we have Paramount, I believe is more kind of, you know, um, like West Hollywood area. I don't know the exact neighborhood that it's in. Um, so you kind of have those two that are over here or uh, on the west side, but then you have uh, three in the valley. Um, I think that's all the studios. Those are kind of their own centers. Those are, you, you can think about those as like the original factories of a town. Um, and so those kind of have their population poles around them. So LA just, just is idiosyncratic, doesn't really fit into this, but a lot of cities can be described by the, the monocentric city model where um, you know, there's a dense center and it gets less and less dense as we go out um, from that center and the employment is focused in that, uh, in that dense uh, center. And the monocentric city model can kind of describe those dynamics, why we see that population concentration in the center. That's kind of the expensive area and then it gets cheaper as we move away from the center. All right, so we are gonna assume in the monocentric city model that the jobs are primarily located in the city center, what we are calling the CBD. Now, <laughs> these days, CBD, um, uh, uh, CBD is, stands for something else, but in the context of, uh, in the context of uh, this lecture, it's the central business uh, district. Okay, and so the idea here is that's where the jobs are, the central business district. Residents uh, work in the central business district. So if they live outside of it, they have to commute. We are gonna, for simplicity, assume that all the households are identical in the model. And we are gonna assume that there's only two goods, housing and consumption. So if I'm a household, I'm gonna buy some housing and I'm gonna buy some consumption uh, goods. Everybody has the same income, which we're gonna denote as Y. And basically you assume, uh, you consume C, which is your consumption and Q, which is your housing. So the more Q you have, the more housing. Uh, you have bigger house, bigger square footage, that sort of thing. We're going to normalize the price of consumption to one. So we're going to say, all right, everything is relative to, this is often done in econ models. You should probably get used to it if you're an econ major. One of the prices is usually normalized to one. And then you could think of all the other prices as being relative to that price. It's not that important for this model, but we're just going to say the price of consumption is one. Therefore, the price of rent is P. And then that's going to be relative to the price of consumption. It's not going to be that important. Okay. Now we're going to say, let's add commuting to the model. So if I live outside the, uh, the central business district at a distance of X, so you could think of this X represents mileage from the center. So if I live five miles from the center, this X is five, say. The cost of commuting is T per mile. Okay. 
So therefore, what I'm gonna, what my budget is gonna be, is my take-home pay is gonna be Y, my income, minus my commuting costs. So whatever my my commuting costs, you could think about this as like monthly. This is my monthly income minus my monthly computing costs, which will be how many miles I live away from the city um, times the cost per mile. So I need to take that out of my income. Then what I spend my income on is consumption and housing, where this is the price of consumption is one and the price of housing is P. So P times Q, P price of housing times the quantity of housing. That's how much I'm going to spend on housing. This is how much I spend on consumption. Do some rearranging. So if I put these two goods on uh, X and Y axis, where Q is the amount of housing, C is the um, C is the amount of consumption. Then I rearrange this. So I have C on one side and Y minus TX minus PQ on the other side. So for those of you that have done budget constraints before, like if you've had 3,100, you've probably done this a billion times. Um, if you haven't, all we're doing is graphing a line, okay? So this describes the different um, amounts of the good the person can buy. So basically this is what we call the budget constraint. The consumer can be anywhere on this line in terms of their spending. So they could basically spend all their Y minus XT on consumption and they would be here. If they spent all their Y minus XT on um, housing, they would be uh, down here. All right, we put this C as zero and that's where they would, that's where they would be, okay? So this describes all the different bundles of consumption and housing the consumer can buy, okay? And this is obviously determined by these parameters, where they live, if they live further away, they have less money, um, the price of housing, um, you know, how that, how that varies will also determine what they can buy. Okay, now what they're gonna do is they're gonna choose the bundle that gives them the highest utility, that makes them the best off. Again, this will be all a review for people that have 3,100. If you haven't had 3,100, it's not that complicated. Um, but basically, you're gonna choose the bundle that makes you feel the best. This indifference curve, basically what we're saying is along this indifference curve, that person's utility is the same. So this represents all the points that give people the same amount of happiness. And your goal is to get to the highest indifference curve. So basically you could think of there's a difference curves going out here, out here that are happier, happier, happier. There are difference curves here that are less happy, less happy. You're gonna choose your bundle that gets you on the highest indifference curve, gives you the highest level of happiness. Okay, and so for this one, we're gonna call it C star, Q star here. Okay, now, we have assumed identical households with identical income, okay? Now, therefore, what that means is people living in the city center have to be equally happy to those that are in the suburbs. Otherwise, there will be movement. So in order for what we call the spatial equilibrium to, to work and that nobody wants to move, everybody has to be equally happy either in the city center or elsewhere. Otherwise, people will be moving back and forth. For the spatial, so, so for the spatial equilibrium to work, people have to be equally happy. Okay, now, if prices were the same, if it cost the same amount to live in the city center versus the suburbs, this would not be possible. Okay, why is that? Well, the people who are living in the city center would have more money. All right, why is that? Okay, if I live in the city center, let's say, uh, let's say I live right in the city center, therefore X is zero. Remember what X is? X is the distance of my commute. So if I live in the city center, I don't have a commute, X is zero. Therefore, this number, Y minus XT, is just Y. I would have more money than somebody who lives, say, five miles, 10 miles away. Therefore, I would be on a higher budget constraint. Okay, this would be my budget constraint if I lived in the city center. This would be my budget constraint if I lived away from the city center. Notice the person who lives in the city center now is on a higher indifference curve. They're happier. So what has to happen is prices have to adjust. That person who lives in the city center then has to pay more for housing. If that's the case, basically, then they have a steeper um, indifference curve, this one, than the person who lives further away. So the P2, the people who live in the city center have to be paying higher prices. Therefore, that's kind of equalizing the people who live in the suburbs 
to the people who live in the city center and they can be on the same indifference curve. Okay. So in this case, this is, this is the people who live further away budget constraint. This is the people who live in the city center budget constraint. They would both choose the best bundle for them and it puts them on the same indifference curve. Therefore, there's no incentive to move from the city center to the suburbs. You would be equally um, happy and therefore our spatial equilibrium could be consistent. Okay. And so if we do the simple monocentric city model, what we should see is that the housing prices are going to be uh, lower as we move away from the central business district. And the people who live further from the central business district will consume more housing. So if you look up here, these are the people living further away. We can see that Q1 is bigger than Q2. Therefore, they're basically living in bigger houses. So what this predicts is we'll have higher housing prices closer to the city center and more denser housing. Um, basically, people will live in smaller, uh, smaller dwellings. As we move away from the city center, housing will get cheaper and people live in larger houses. All right, which is basically how it works. This is just a fun uh, example uh, that shows you New York City population. It really is this commuting into the central business district where this is the population during the day, uh, pre-pandemic. Um, and then this is the population um, at night. So you can see that people basically are working here and then they are commuting out back to their houses at night where this is, this is you know, many of them are living in this area and these areas, as you can see, their population goes up um, at night. All right, you can see simply the population density in LA. You can kind of see, as I was describing, the relative uh, uh, city centers that LA has. Here's downtown. All right, but then we also have some density here near Culver City, some density here. I'm guessing this is UCLA, some density here near the beach. Here's also Long Beach, which is a big city in its own right. Um, and then you have some big uh, population centers out in the valley uh, as well. This one's around Disney, around the studio uh, Disney. Okay. All right, let's move to the land use. We've done the monocentric city model. Let's move to land use.